In today's episode on the Dive Saga channel, we are going on an expedition to the deepest depths of our oceans as we explore how to dive to 400 feet or 120 meters. This is me. At first sight, it looks like I'm just exploring another dive site in the Caribbean for another exciting YouTube episode. However, in this exact moment, there is one very, very important side note to be made. If I abort the dive right now and ascend directly to the surface, I will almost certainly immediately black out. Within minutes, a mixture of nitrogen and helium will start foaming through my pores as the safety divers will get ready to perform CPR. There is nothing cool and nothing glorious about that statement. It is simply the reality of deep trimix diving. It's an early morning as we load the dive boat for our journey to the north side of Utila for a visit to one of my favorite deep dive sites called the Himalayas. Today's dive is exciting, but one could argue that it is an exercise in futility. Why is it an exercise in futility? Well, to understand that, we first have to understand why most people tech dive and what it takes to dive to 400 feet or 120 meters. Technical diving and deeper ocean exploration are an amazing way to satisfy our human drive for discovery. Going to places no one has ever been before and the potential of finding tiny missing puzzle pieces in the story of our human existence on this planet is an exhilarating activity. For most recreational dives and some technical dives, regular air which we find in our atmosphere is a perfectly fine breathing gas. However, as soon as we want to dive deeper than 50 to 60 meters or roughly 150 to 200 feet, regular air no longer works. I'll let my dive buddy Stephen Ainsley explain why. Regular breathing air contains 21% oxygen and that's excellent for human beings. However, because of Dalton's low partial pressures, as soon as we breathe a gas at a depth of 10 meters, 33 feet, the effects of that gas are multiplied by a factor of two. At 20 meters, 66 feet, that's a factor of three. At 30 meters, 100 feet, a factor of four, and so on and so on. So you might think that oxygen's good, but beyond a partial pressure of 1.4, or the surface equivalent of 140%, oxygen starts becoming toxic. Essentially, that means that regular breathing air can become toxic at around 56 meters, 184 feet. Because oxygen becomes toxic at depth and nitrogen causes a sense of narcosis and impaired judgment, a third gas needs to be added to the mix. And that gas is helium. This allows us to reduce the oxygen content to a mere 11% for this particular dive. This is 200 cubic feet of helium. Current local market value around 460 US dollars. Considering that on our 400 foot or 120 meter dive, we're going to use pretty much all of it. And given that every inhaled and exhaled breath on open circuit basically ends back up in the atmosphere, that should give you a first indicator that at least from an economic perspective, this dive is a little bit crazy. The helium is mixed with oxygen and air to create a mixture of 11% oxygen and 60% helium. If you know that at least 16% oxygen is needed at the surface to sustain consciousness, you understand that this Trimix 1160, as it's called, is not suitable for consumption at the surface. If you breathe this mix right here at the surface, or when getting in your equipment, or even on the first few moments of a dive in shallow water, you will pass out from oxygen starvation. 
you could essentially lose your life right there before you even get started. Yet at your chosen depth, this gas right here is optimal because the 11% oxygen will be comparable to the 140% oxygen at the surface. It's not beyond toxic, but very rich in oxygen. Now that we understand the need for specialized gas, its high cost and some of the associated risks, you may start to understand why diving to such great depths holds significant logistic complexity. But there is more. Despite the complex preparations and equipment considerations, diving to 120 meters or 400 feet is actually the easy part. To state it crudely, any moron with access to Trimix could do it. The real issue is getting out. At 120 meters or 400 feet, inert gas such as nitrogen and helium dissolves into our tissues at a rate 13 times faster than at the surface. If we would surface directly from this point, all this gas would make a dramatic escape out of our tissues through our body and result in extreme pain and most likely an uncomfortable death. And that's the essence of decompression diving. Most of the gas that dissolves into our tissues while at depth has to come out before we reach the surface or there will be severe consequences. Decompression theory is not a definitive science. Many variables go into calculating decompression times, but when using a reasonably conservative decompression schedule, a bottom time of just 10 minutes yields an ascent and decompression time of 78 minutes. And that's putting it mildly because of those 10 minutes of bottom time, over six minutes is spent as descent time. That means that over two thirds of the time is spent just getting there. That leaves very little time for exploration. One argument might be to simply choose to add more bottom time, but every breath at 120 meters, 400 feet requires the gas equivalent of 13 breaths at the surface. So while simply bringing more gas is theoretically an option, longer bottom times also require longer decompression times. For every extra minute of bottom time, the decompression schedule gets longer by eight minutes. So that means if we wanted to add just five minutes of exploration time to the bottom time, we would have to add an extra 40 minutes to the decompression time. Now, you could say just bring more gas, but of course, making dives longer by 45 minutes or more has significant logistical implications. On top of that, these 78 minutes of decompression are only sufficient because they're made possible by using specialized gases. Very much like this video is made possible by today's sponsor. Bay Islands College of Diving is happily providing the logistics and gas necessary to create this educational dive saga adventure. Trimix diving and learning from experienced tech and Trimix instructors can be done safely if done within limits and under proper guidance. Besides technical diving, Bay Islands College of Diving in Utila offers recreational courses, dive master training and scuba instructor training. With an on-site marine conservation NGO and an on-site hyperbaric chamber, the Bay Islands College of Diving is the ultimate dive center in the region. Visit www.dive-utila.com to explore their expansive offerings of diving adventures and mention the promo code DIVESAGA in your email for a 10% discount on your next course. Discounts are not an option when it comes to today's dive plan. 
The 78 minutes of ascent time after a mere 10 minutes of bottom time is only possible when very specific gas switches are made at very specific points. As mentioned, the bottom gas we're using is a Trimix 1160, which is very effective at 120 meters, but it does start to lose that effectiveness almost immediately upon ascent due to its low oxygen content. At around the 50 meter, 165 feet mark, we switch to a 2512. This is a gas with 25% oxygen and 12% helium. Then at the 70 foot mark or 21 meters, we switch to this nitrox 50%. Then we progress until we reach the six meter point or the 20 foot point uh, in the dive. That's where we switch to this 100% pure oxygen. We do this so that at all these points we have the highest possible oxygen concentration without bringing a ridiculous amount of cylinders. These high percentages of oxygen in the decompression gas help wash the helium and nitrogen out of our tissues at an accelerated pace when performing the decompression stops. For reference, the stops on this particular dive include a 1 minute stop at 54 meters on the 2512 decompression gas, followed by a 1 minute stop at 51, a 1 minute stop at 48, 1 minute at 45, 1 minute at 42, 1 minute at 39, 1 minute at 36, 1 minute at 33, 1 minute at 30, 1 minute at 27 meters, 1 minute at 24, a switch to nitrox 50 and a 2 minute stop at 21 meters, a 3 minute stop at 80 meters, 5 minutes at 15 meters, 6 minutes at 12 meters, 9 minutes at 9 meters, a gas switch to 100% oxygen at 6 meters and a 34 minute stop. If any of these stops are compromised for any reason, the results can be catastrophic. It's worth mentioning that the most common cause of tech diver fatality is switching to the incorrect gas. Remember that oxygen becomes toxic under pressure and switching to an incorrect high concentration of oxygen on a deeper stop can result in immediate convulsions and drowning. This video does not serve to say that technical diving in general or trimix diving specifically is not an activity worth pursuing. In fact, besides underwater filmmaking and training scuba instructors, exploring new dive sites with my buddies is one of my favorite things to do. However, just like with any extreme sport, proper training, but also setting smart limits is very important. On occasion, divers do venture past these depths, usually by pulling themselves down lines, assisted by other divers and support teams on the surface. While these activities have less to do with adventure and exploration and more with stunt work and record breaking, the science behind it is of course incredible. Closed circuit rebreathers also offer answers to some of the limitations we discussed today, but require their own set of training and investment. Ultimately, scuba diving is an amazing sport and is very safe so long as divers seek proper training and stay within their limits. Open circuit dives to 120 meters or 400 feet and beyond are technically interesting but perhaps after what we have shown you today, you may understand that an argument could be made that they are otherwise pointless. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you next time. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe to the Dive Saga channel.